So, welcome everybody to uh, the first, the, the inaugural meeting of Universal Data Plane API Working Group. Uh, I think hopefully everyone's here because they've read the uh, charter that was uh, put together um, a few weeks back by Matt and myself, and perhaps may have even read uh, the uh, blog post by Matt um, uh, on Medium, which was describing roughly what you know, the, the goals of the Universal Data Plane API are. So hopefully we don't need to do too much to sort of level set expectations there. But um, I think what would be great is if we can just go around and then just like introduce ourselves, like say, you know, who we are, which company we represent, what we're hoping to get out of this uh, series of meetings. So I can start things off. I'm Harvey Took. I work at uh, Google. I'm uh, also an Envoy contributor and senior maintainer. and. My real hope is that we can achieve, uh, um, we can actually make concrete progress towards realizing the vision that was set forth in the charter and Matt's blog post of making Envoy's APIs uh, universal in the sense that they can be applied well beyond uh, Envoy itself. So the set of APIs, which you know generally describes uh, behavior that you expect from data plane load balances and proxies. Can we come up with a common configuration language, starting with the existing Envoy APIs and make this work for a whole uh, variety of other products and build a, an ecosystem which can interoperate together and uh, provide a lot of value uh, as a result. So that's me. Uh, maybe we can just go across uh, left to right in the grid uh, as, as I see it's so a Matt. Hey, uh, I'm Matt. Uh, I work at Lyft. I'm the founder of the Envoy project. Uh, excited to be here for all the same reasons that Harvey laid out. Uh, back love? Oh, we, we don't have audio from you. Muted. There we go. Okay. That, that, is that better? Yeah. Okay, good. I do that a lot. You can see my lips moving. You can't see, you can't hear anything, right? So I'm Vaslav Turchik. I, I'm, I'm at uh, Microsoft. Um, and again, I guess a lot of the same reasons that Harvey mentioned already, but we did a, I think we kind of tackled this, um, the control plane uh, universal API pretty recently. That was a joint effort, which which seemed to have some, uh, some pretty interesting uptake. So it's interesting to see how this will play out for the data plane as well. Okay, very cool. Mark Nana. Sorry, talking to me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm Mark Roth. I work on gRPC, and uh, we're looking at uh, adapting this uh, API for uh, for use in gRPC. Um, hi, I'm Anna Berenberg. Uh, I'm area tech lead here at Google, working on um, Envoy, gRPC, you can think of. Everything interesting. <laughs> Everything interesting, yes. And my interest in this group is actually uh, interoperability of XDS servers, uh, given that we now have so many in different companies. Hi, I'm Vishal. Uh, I work uh, on gRPC load balancer and load balancer in general uh, in Google. And uh, obviously, my interest in XDS is uh, primarily uh, stems from gRPC, uh, and now it's expanding. Uh -huh. Uh, hi, I'm Hong, and I'm the uh, area technique lead for API design and infrastructure. Uh, it's, um, I'm, I don't work on specific API, but I like to help uh, on the API design and the governance, and hope to, to contribute uh, to this project. Thanks. Um, I don't know how to say that. Cruzil. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, and then Ruby C. Basadis. Um, hi, I'm representing NS1 today. We're an authoritative DNS provider. Um, I think our main interest here is kind of just figuring out how to have some tighter integrations with some of this stuff as it moves forward. We have a lot of this like data generally, and I think, you know, kind of reading through that blog post and all that, it seems like DNS was one way to do it. And we're seeing if there's a way to advance with you guys as you kind of develop this API. Okay, awesome, thanks. Uh, Willie? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm Willy Taro. I'm the founder of uh, Proxy. Uh, I've been maintaining it for something like uh, 18 years, something like this. 
Um, I'm not using APIs myself, but uh, some of our users uh, do or, um, or ask us to improve in this area. Um, however, I'm extremely careful about uh, whatever evolution we make uh, to maintain the maximum backwards compatibility in test configuration. Uh, most users make big jumps in configuration. Uh, that's something very important for us. So that's why I'm interested in participating here. Great. Thanks a lot. Uh, Ethan? Yeah. I think you're muted. If... Hello. Hello. Yeah. Did you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Uh, this is Ethan uh, from Ante Financial. I'm working on a uh, front end load balancer and uh, so far PC service mesh things uh, in Ant Financial. And uh, we are using Envoy ChatDS API in controlling data plan. And uh, I'm very interested in the working group. And uh, I myself will uh, contain the working group to uh, um, uh, join the discussion for the. Uh, 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 um, Angelco? Hi, uh, yeah, uh, Angelco. We can, we can say that as Angelco. Uh, yeah. I'm a director of engineering at uh, HA Proxy, and uh, I work with Willy and uh, with APIs. So uh, from my standpoint, um, if we can uh, integrate HA Proxy uh, with, uh, with uh, emerging trends and uh, uh, help uh, help improve uh, the general state of uh, APIs being used for proxies. Uh, that's primary. That's my primary goal. Awesome, uh, Eric. Oh, you 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 need to unmute on your uh, laptop. Or, or... Yeah. All right. So you don't hear me twice. Because we're dialed in as well for the one. Okay, uh, I'm I'm Eric. Uh, I'm part of GRPC team, um, and we're interested in it for all control plane and data plane pieces to integrate it, sort of like things that Andre Envoy is interested in. Um, okay, I'm Doug Foley. I work on the Go implementation of GRPC, and yeah, same thing. Interested in you know making sure that the API is going to work well for you know, upgrading across various versions of GRPC and make sure everything works smoothly. Uh, hi, I'm Louis Ryan. I, I work on Istio here at Google. So uh, all the same things, really. Cool. Uh, Brian? Hey, uh, Brian Salenza. Uh, I'm from AWS. I'm a software engineer here. My main focus right now is on AWS App Mesh. Um, but I'm also here sort of representing AWS in general because there's a lot of interest in both Envoy and XDS um, within AWS and within Amazon as a whole. My real hopes right now are, are one, to learn um, about what's coming, about how you're thinking about the API design. Hopefully I can contribute there as well, um, but also to perhaps represent the needs of some of the other teams within AWS or Amazon who are interested in adopting one Envoy or XDS. Um, for their own needs. Awesome. And finally, uh, Lisa. Hey, I'm Lisa, uh, working at Tetrate, and uh, I'm interested in, uh, I'm an Envoy maintainer as well, and I'm interested in this work group as, as all the same reason that Harvey and Louis and yeah, everyone talks about. We have the um, some integration point with cloud providers as well, so I'm interested in those as well. Okay, that's me. Awesome. Thanks. Um, okay, so that covers the introduction. Um, I linked to the charter here. I, again, I assume most folks have read this. Um, yeah, so there's actually, the, the idea here is we're trying to actually evolve, you know, the APIs in a way which is sort of taking into account the needs of many projects and organizations. There's actually a lot of people on this call from Google. Um, but that shouldn't be an indication of any particular sort of waiting in that direction. We, we're actually here also to learn about, you know, what things when we're thinking about APIs make sense to other proxies and projects. Um, so 
Uh, the next thing that I thought it would be good to just point to, to, to mention uh, to kick things off is like in terms of upcoming activity around the APIs and probably one of the biggest changes we're going to see in the next few months and sort of the opportunity for this working group to be effective will be to is this um, stable API versioning proposal, which uh, I, I linked to the GitHub issue there and a, a sort of a proposed plan of record for actually making that uh, manifest in the Envoy code base. So today we uh, just as a sort of brief history, you know, we started off with the Envoy V1 APIs, uh, which were pr provided Envoy with things like service discovery and then incrementally additional features like route configuration lookup and uh, things like listener discovery. And we went uh, about two years ago in our project, we formed a set of uh, relative coherent gRPC based APIs, which also had REST variants, which were the, what we call the V2 XDS APIs. And they've essentially become the standard across all of the Envoy ecosystem. Uh, built up, you know, on top of uh, bidirectional streaming gRPC and protobuf as their sort of core de defining characteristics. And uh, there's been actually a huge amount of uh, work and churn in these APIs over time. And some of the aspects of these APIs are truly university. Some of them are very specific to Envoy. And we're at this point now uh, where we're actually having at least our first, you know, real additional client. There are many XDS servers out there, but there's only really been one XDS client for the longest time and that was Envoy and that's uh, gRPC LB. And that's planning on onboarding uh, these protocols. And we, while working with this team, we actually realized that you know, there's a number of things that we need to do to make these APIs usable by folks beyond uh, Envoy. And these include things like, for example, trying to at the design level, think about these APIs in terms of what is Envoy specific and what is universal. And there are also some very sort of uh, concrete things we can do, like not breaking, um, uh, deprecate, removing fields or, um, you know, basically breaking the APIs uh, in ways which uh, from a consumer of protobuf would be considered to be sort of non-standard. Uh, there's various conventions which have arisen in the protobuf world around how you treat protobufs and APIs, which uh, Envoy was not really respecting because we had our own sort of um, communal understanding of how compatibility was supposed to work. So we're trying to adjust these things and, and get them together and, what it, uh, and sort of try and uh, improve things here. So we have a, a detailed design document describing how we're planning on sort of stabilizing the Envoy APIs and actually moving from beyond just a monolithic notion of V2 to a family of APIs essentially which would be versioned independently and along major versions and where we will be working on essentially uh, a V3 and uh, things like V2 and V3 will be immutable APIs, which will only grow in non-breaking ways. And this is essentially what we're working on right now. And it's basically a combination of actual API design, but it's also a lot of tooling to make this feasible um, on the Envoy side. And it's also things like um, features in Envoy to make it uh, reasonable to roll out these APIs and um, new minor versions without uh, actually breaking existing deployments and that kind of thing. So we're actually planning right now and the plan of record is to um, at the end of Q2 or actually coming up is to cut, um, make a start V3 alpha essentially for any API which we want to start reorganizing and we want to uh, by the end of Q3 finalize v3 and actually cut that as the sort of the next version for whichever api needs to actually be bumped and probably a lot of apis would be bumped because there's a quite a bit of technical debt in the apis because we didn't want to break folks uh, um, historically and this is actually a really great opportunity alongside that there's actually started to there's now been a bifurcation at the top level of the apis in the package namespace from envoy.xyz to envoy.xyz and also udpa. XYZ, and we are hoping that we can try and you just use package namespaces to start drawing a clearer distinction between parts of the API, which can be, you know, tr truly reusable by anyone and ones which are very Envoy specific. Now, this will be a long process which won't happen just over the course of uh, V3 or even V4, but we, over time, we aim to just directionally move towards this uh, uh, package uh, organization and um, the, the end state is ideally just the Envoy namespace only has things which are specific to Envoy and potentially there will be other proxy trees there. For example, if HA proxy would need to have some very HA proxy specific things, 
they could live in such a tree. Um, hey, Har hey, Harvey. Yeah. Um, what, one thing that we should talk about, doesn't have to be now, is, um, you know, we, we had obviously, we used to have all the APIs in the data plane API repo. Yes. Um, I, I do wonder if, um, especially for the uh, UDPA portion of the tree, if we should plan on actually moving that back out into a into a separate repo. Mm -hmm. um, it would be more in the spirit of sharing. Uh, so it's something that we don't have to decide today, but I think that we should talk about that. And, and I think given that the rate of change in the UDPA uh, API should be slower. We're actually going to have to figure out a bunch of stuff around Envoy documentation because all of the Envoy documentation effectively has to be stripped from those from those APIs uh, and and put somewhere else. So it's you know it's probably worth just just putting down uh, an action thought item of the actual storage and structure of which GitHub repos we want things to actually live in. Sure, I, I add that to the uh, sort of technical topics. Um, the CNCF have actually created a, for us a GitHub uh, repository, so that could be a starting point, but we, we yeah, that, that doesn't have to be the one we use. Cool. Uh, yeah, I kind of want to echo uh, what Matt, I, I, I think that's a good idea. And so mm -hmm. if uh, um, that's what we run on the API repos at Google, right? So you GitHub um, slash Google APIs. And that is all the protos and all the changes is the, you, some team submitted the proto change before any code is written. And that is where you define the interface before you have code. Then yeah. you can yeah. integrate it from that. Because the proto is relatively lightweight, so you have like a hundred of repos depending on the, on the relatively stabilized the proto. The dependence is very low. Yeah, I mean, that's that's actually what we used to do uh but you know it it had made at least on the envoy side of things our development velocity slower because we had people doing prs back and forth i, I you know i think that now we are at a different level of maturity so i think i think now is the time that we probably need to think about moving back yeah um okay yeah, noted for sure. That's I think something we should definitely cover. Um, yeah, that, that would be definitely welcome, and I think it would increase the visibility and discoverability of both the API and uh, any documentation that uh, can can be accompanying it. Yeah, we'll actually have to think about documentation from Envoy and the API perspective a little differently. So, I mean, we can strip the Envoy specific documentation out, but we probably want to have some. Um, you know, union of the, you know, the actual API documentation and the Envoy specific when we build our docs, I think. Yeah, yeah, and I think that many projects will, will probably need that. So that might be something where, again, these are just things that we can think about, but I could imagine that, you know, the existing proto doc tool, maybe it would have some way of, of taking a set of generic protos and then projects can specify additional documentation that gets effectively merged in somehow. Yeah, some sort of templating thing. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay, excellent. So, yeah, so I linked to the plan of record. Um, so we, I've also sort of there's a number of sort of like technical things in there which uh, I think are interesting to this group here, and that is we want to actually like real soon now, like you know, within the next week, start to lock down our Envoy's APIs. A bit better. So currently, right now, any Envoy maintainer can merge a PR which touches an API, and there's no coherent sort of uh, review of the APIs. And um, we would like to probably we, we've created a team within um, Git, uh, the Envoy Proxy GitHub organization called uh, API Shepherds. And uh, basically, uh, please let us know if you're interested in being one of these API Shepherds. Ideally, you're very familiar with Envoy if you are uh, right now. Um, and they, they, this group will be you know be necessary to be it'll require mandatory sign off from API shepherds before we can actually merge any PRs to the API tree. And this is our first step to avoid breaking things because these group will be responsible for first of all, not breaking things in the V2 APIs. And second of all, they'll be responsible for trying to actually provide, you know, tasteful API design, make sure we are acting consistently across, you know, different parts. Like if someone introduces a header map here, they use the same, you know, data type as a header map there. Uh, this, 
And there's another group that I've created called Envoy Proxy UDP AWG, which hopefully anyone here who wants to submit their GitHub ID to, to me can be a part of. And, and we'll try and ensure that this, is, this group is tagged on all API related reviews. So there's, there'll, there'll be, you know, mandatory sign off from uh, API Shepherds, but everyone will get to actually see um, all these reviews and have an opportunity to comment. Um, uh, you know, usually we don't, we don't review, we don't merge things instantly. There's usually like a day or so at least before um, uh, anything gets really done with some um, uh, reviews in Envoy. So um, that's uh, probably like the, the most interesting one, which is about to happen immediately, as, w as well as sort of V3 alpha being cut. So that's sort of the opportunity for anyone who has like, who wants to suggest, well, why don't we make this change the API to make it more universal? And it can be a hugely structural change if you would like. Um, we can actually do that. I mean, structural within the bounds of this still somewhat resembling XDS. Like we're, we're not interested in completely changing the discovery service overnight, how the way the X discovery service protos work overnight or completely changing like the notion of listeners and clusters. But, you know, there's, there's, there's some amount of uh, flexibility we have there. For example, you know, if someone were to point out, for example, this is a routing level concept, but in all these other systems, it's a service level concept or vice versa we could potentially um, think a bit about how we could accommodate these as we move towards V3. And I think that's a good, uh, good, good time to be doing that. And you get these notions on the table. And I think like this uh, working group is ideally where we can actually have this discussion and, uh, and, and, and raise uh, the, the things that might be interesting there. So uh, yeah, so that, that's all I had to say about the version proposal before we actually like, dive into maybe some of the technical topics that we would like to get out of address in the working group. and. Um, we should actually just actually before we do that, let's just quickly chat about a meeting cadence and uh, and so on. Does uh, monthly work for most folks? Uh, do you think both frequently would make sense? I would vote for monthly right 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 now. I, I I feel like we can do a lot of things over email, and then if we feel like we need to meet meet more often, we can. That that would be my vote. Okay, that sounds great. I agree. I yeah. for, okay, does that agree with everyone else? I, I, agree. I agree. Okay. Cool. So we had a request from, I think it's Dave Cheney, to not make these meetings on Friday because you know he's in Australia and Sydney, which uh, uh, is not a good time in Sydney. <laughs> uh, it's a Saturday morning. Um, so ideally, we'll, we'll push this to uh, somewhere midweek. Um, is Doodle okay to try coordinate a, um, a common time on? With uh, was it was that okay with everyone? I mean, I, I, I hate it's full of ads. But... What 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 is a time that generally works with the time zones that that we have? I I, I don't even know what time zones that. So we have someone in Australia, yeah, uh, China, China, Europe also potentially or yes. or yes, France, yeah. Okay, I guess. Lizan's probably the time zone expert. What 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 time do you do meetings, Lizan? Well, I I do sacrifice my time zone, so <laughs> it will be like around midnight in like in Pacific time. I don't think that works for Eastern time zone. So probably some time around now is good for me, but I don't think it's really good for those in Asia if they are I think it's like four or five AM in China now. So, well, I, sorry, like what, what, with your experience of doing worldwide meetings, like, is there any good time or what? what would well, you it's hard to accommodate if, if those people are like, uh, if everyone like from West Coast, Europe and Asia, that's basically like eight hour difference each. So it's, it'd never be a good time for everyone. Well, we could rotate times. That's one option, but, uh, yeah. um, I mean, I'm certainly for, for East Coast US, I'm willing to go to like 9 p.m. whatever, but I know that's probably not great for Europe. Um, is everyone HA proxy? Are, are you folks in Europe or are you uh, US based? We are in Europe. We are okay. in Europe. It's, uh, yeah. We probably don't okay. want to get it's, it's never, never be a good time for like all of those three things, like eight each. Why don't we? I, I mean, this is something that we can figure out offline but it feels like to be fair to people like we should probably rotate um yeah. so that you know one one month it's within working hours for some people and then the next month they have to either be up really late or something yeah like yeah you, you can only accommodate up to two of the three okay 
So, so maybe we just take an offline action to maybe every other month we can rotate um, so that it works for two and then the third is going to be very late or very early. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And what, should, should we just do it all? Should we just pick a fixed time, uh, which makes sense for the time zones? I mean, there's, there's quite a large number of people to coordinate, so I don't know. Um, I think uh, we, we, whatever, whatever seems like normal working hours for one, one of the three time zones, one of the three regions should be okay. So w whichever time zone is, is uh, going to end up uh, with the short end of the stick, uh, they'll have to adapt anyway. So they're just going to have to take the hit. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Okay, so let's, uh, yeah, let's just go into technical topics. So, uh, and please add any agenda items uh, if you would like to. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, let me, uh, if you'd like to, uh, I'll share this doc with those who haven't. So this is a sort of a, an artifact for me using Google uh, Corporate G Suite, which uh, means I need to share with everyone who needs access. Um, yeah, so um, I think Mark had the first sort of technical topic that he wanted to uh, discuss uh, into, in the context of this working group. Yeah, so, um, you know, and I'm, I'm not sure, you know, just uh, procedurally, you know, how much detail we want to get into this here, but I just wanted to sort of float the idea. I can always, you know, if it seems reasonable to people, put together a PR and then we can, you know, iterate it, you know, in, in there. Um, but basically the idea is um, right now the, um, I think it's in CDS, I believe, there's a, uh, um, the, the CDS response that comes back basically tells the client, okay, here's what intracluster load balancing policy I want you to use. And right now it's an enum. And we've got a lot of sort of custom load balancing policies that we want to use in different cases. And so an enum is not really going to cut it because we can't expect, you know, adding a new enum value for every, you know, random custom case that, that we, uh, you know, may want to use in a particular uh, deployment. So and, and in particular in gRPC, we have a, a pluggable uh, LB policy API. So anyone, you know, any third party can sort of write their own and, and plug it in. Um, so what, uh, what I'm proposing is that basically we, um, you know, replace with appropriate backward compatibility, obviously, uh, the enum with a, a more flexible system where like the, the policy name is essentially a field and we can sort of attach some, you know, arbitrary, uh, like a proto with arbitrary configuration options for that, uh, that LB policy. Does this seem reasonable? Yeah, that's a, that's a huge, huge plus one for me. We actually just did that with the cluster objects also, uh, because now we allow cluster extensibility. So it would be great to actually move that way. And just from the Envoy perspective, we want to allow pluggable load balancers also. So that sounds great. Super. All right. Yeah. And if you actually just look at the changes that were done in the last couple of months to add this capability to clusters, I think you can mostly replicate what was done there. Okay, sounds good. I'll try to throw together a PR then. Yeah, um, and the question is, do you, do you want this into, so do, which things I guess belong in the V3 alpha and which things belong in V2? Uh, do, you need, do you need this like sooner or later? It would be nice to have it sooner. Um, it, would, it would help a lot of things on our end. And also, I mean, since this is presumably gonna be done as an addition, it shouldn't break backward compatibility. It'll just be a- That's correct. You know, the, the old field will have to continue to be populated basically for, for older clients. Cool. Uh, yeah, I think we should take the opportunity just to put that into the um, Android API design guidance. And it's, uh, this kind of debate has been happening many, many times. So the, our rule of thumb is that if you define an enum, you need to prepare that it won't change more than once a year. I might like HTTP 1, HTTP 2, quick, speedy, you know that once a year is where the enum can handle uh, pretty well. Anything more than that, you start uh, with a string, and that is like ISO, like a country code, right? And you you just have to define the string, then there's a spec to explain uh, what is the string. And even more aggressive, then you go to the Kubernetes CRD model, which you define the CRD, you, you're using a string to refine to uh, arbitrary CRD in the cluster, that you don't have a spec on that string, um, but you're using a CRD. And so that is where the, 
granularity goes, and that rule of thumb seems to be working well at the uh, size of Google. Yeah. Yeah, that, I, yeah, I was going to say that that makes sense to me just because thinking about it now, I, I can think of many cases with the Envoy APIs where the use of Enom has caused issues. So yeah. I, I would be fine with basically just saying that unless we all agree that this is one of those Enoms that's just never going to change, that we just block them. I, I, I agree. I'm hung, like this is a good wisdom. Do you have like, a, is there a link to like where this is all collected or is this just the collective wisdom of... Uh, API folks. Uh, so uh, in the in the Google in our API design guide, uh, we have a section called um, a common design pattern, and we collect um, many of them, but also we miss uh, many of them. So can I can I'm put just a, can put a link to that doc in the meeting notes. Yeah, that would be very uh, helpful. I, I will. I will. Super. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, we, I, I mean, we, we base our versioning proposal roughly on what was um, at the, uh, in, in those best practices, but it seems like we, we probably should become familiar with all of them and try and collect as many as possible, which are missing from that doc. Um, cool. So, yeah, so I think that one's uh, not particularly controversial. Um, the, the next uh, item was federating XDS. So we, we have been to Google in being able to support um, uh, XDS in a world of multiple uh, management servers, um, each responsible for some set of uh, resources such as services and who are authoritative for them, but peering together and being able to share configuration and distribute it. Uh, and this can you know, address a number of interesting sort of uh, use cases such as uh, multi-cloud, on-premise hybrid and so on. And this um, actually is going to require a lot of thinking to actually make work with uh, XCS if that is indeed the level which we want to federate at. But it's going to, for example, require us to think carefully about how our resource uh, naming works and um, how our resources are composed together and uh, sort of what our um, XDS uh, discovery and protocols look like. I don't think that this is certainly not the meaning to, to brainstorm that, but it's probably a good uh, opportunities to raise that, that to point out that this is something that we're thinking about and that hopefully we can address in the context of UDPA going forward is what would federation actually look like here and that's um, yeah uh, probably going to require a separate design doc and uh, probably deep, deep, uh, deeper dive in uh, later meetings um, is there anything I missed on the topic uh, Anna or Louis that you happen to think <clears throat> there are different use cases like authorization. That's where we should look. Whether it's yeah. only or failover or whatever, all, all sorts of scenarios. Um, and I would love to hear other people input because we and I have been talking about it. Uh, but I'd like to hear um, how other companies, especially cloud providers, if anybody here is from cloud provider space, how they think about it. Um, or people who mesh So I, I guess there's kind of an initial question for people, which is the the you know the, the current Envoy APIs and the proposal here, right? They discuss they're discussed in terms of configuring a proxy, right? The the federation use case you, know, you can kind of think of it as either having two endpoints configuring one proxy, or you can think of one control plane using this API as input into another control plane. There's actually, there's a third case and there's a proposal in the Envoy uh, repo currently where um, people want to allow Envoy to consume config from multiple control planes. And then on the Envoy side, they actually want to merge it. Um, so like, I, you know, I, I, I think that that's, there are actually a bunch of interesting reasons uh, why I think people would want to do that. But I, I think that it's worth thinking about it from all of these different points. Uh, Matt, can you put to the, uh, that proposal that you described? Yeah. Um, yeah, I will grab the issue. There's a design doc. Uh, I can put it in the chat. One, one, one sec. Yeah, if you could also just link it to the doc. And, and the, the, thanks. Yeah. So the, the, the fundamental difference between the two use cases, right, is um, 
when one control plane is using the information from another control plane, what you would expect it to do is to recompose that information into other forms, right? Filter things out, augment, join, right? Generally perform compositional operations on that data in, in addition to other sources of data that it may have locally or n different sources of data. So what that would do would be to put pressure on the API to provide the right kinds of information and structure to allow composition to occur. Yep. Um, so it would be, I think it's important for people to understand that if they want to take on that use case, it is going to put pressure on the API to facilitate those compositional patterns. Then we're going to have to look at what compositional patterns make sense. It's yeah. Position in my mind, you're increasing risk for stability of the blocks in this data plane. You're going to be doing complex business operations there. Not necessarily. Wouldn't it be better to um, to contain the uh, the com more complex operations uh, on exactly. uh, on a control plane level? And uh, like there, if, we, if we need to pass information from one control plane to another, to actually have a, another control plane API and then just uh, keep the data plane APIs a, a simpler form. This is, this is a good point, uh, but one of the things that we've actually seen in the Envoy community is that the Envoy APIs, at least the XDS format, so there's, there's two aspects of XDS. There's the actual resources which exist today, like cluster and listener, and these may, you know, are very much data plane specific objects. And there's also the, the transcripts XDS itself, which can be used to, sorry, I'm, I'm getting my echo, um, which can be used to uh, you know, move uh, essentially one proto from point A to point B and um, allow some uh, uh, address with some common addressing scheme. And this is actually being used on the control plane between control plane components and things like Istio, I believe, for things like uh, uh, MCP and also in, I've, I've heard of at least one other large company uh, who I think are in this meeting today might be using uh, who might be using XDS uh, in, in a similar kind of capacity. Yeah, I mean there are I, there's probably not going to be a way to mandate that people funnel everything through a single control plane. And I, I, I think that you know for the people that are speaking about you know it'd be better if everything funneled through a single control plane better to put that logic there. I, I actually agree. I think largely that's true, but I will give you a concrete example from Lyft. So Lyft has a control plane for Envoy where we do most of our control plane management. But let's say, for example, that we want to build a separate service that either does redline testing or does fault injection or something like that. Fundamentally, we have two options. We can build APIs from our primary control plane to talk to another service uh, that would then do the merging there, and that might be the right decision. Or we can potentially allow the data plane to talk to uh, multiple control planes in a very controlled situation and then do the merging on the Envoy. Uh, there, there are pros and cons to actually both, both situations. And I don't know that from an API perspective, we have to preclude people from doing one or the other. But to Louis's point, uh, I think we need to be cognizant of the fact that these APIs might end up getting merged. And I think that's actually worth thinking through. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, cool. So uh, it's been raised. Uh, so split APIs to distinct repository. Okay, that's something that we need to address. I mean, I think pro pro probably we're all in agreement that we need to split the APIs. It's just a question of how, how to, uh, out from Envoy, it's a question of just how to make that work well with the Envoy flow. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to avoid the three way uh, commit dance, but entirely possible we might. Uh, we can, I, I mean, you know, to me, that's something that we have to go off and figure out yeah. and that shouldn't concern this group, right? But if we're, if we're serious about making these universal APIs, we can't, we can't favor the Envoy flow, right? So I, I think it's the right thing to do, which is to have at least the universal data play, plain API portion of it being its own repo. Uh, and, and, and I think that would be nice. Yep, great. Um, so, um, yeah, I guess going forward, um, 
So please, yeah, please do send me your, your GitHub ID if, if you haven't already, and I'll add you to the UDPAWG team. And um, you, you should start seeing a stream of uh, reviews tagged with that, which are pertain to all the API changes. Um, I think we're going to actually, in, just in the scope of Q2, we'll be taking one uh, API package within Envoy and thinking about what V3 Alpha will look like for that and which bits are, you know, uh, universal and which bits are uh, sort of a very Envoy specific. But beyond that, um, we will be doing most of the work in Q3 and so probably after we next meet again. So ideally between now and then, you, uh, please, yeah, do, do follow along the progress there if you're interested in it. Uh, the mailing list is a great place to raise any uh, issues you have. Um, and I think this doc is also a good place to track uh, future agenda items. Uh, with, is there anything else folks wanted to discuss today? Yeah, well, just, I, you know, one, one thing for folks on the call who are, who are not using Envoy, um, whether it's a cloud product or HA proxy, um, and you don't have to answer this now, but I think that the, the sooner that we can get a concrete case of someone that wants to use these APIs, uh, you know, that's not Envoy, so that already includes gRPC, but, you know, if we could make that include, uh, like, additional products, I think that would help us do this, do this right. So, you know, if, if you are looking at this and you're trying to figure out your product plans and, you know, you, you would like to use these APIs for some future product and we can make that concrete, I, I think that would be super helpful. So I would just throw that out there. You don't need to answer right now. Um, but if as part of your plans, you know, you feel that in the, in the Q3, Q4 timeframe, you're going to use these APIs, like let's just work together to, to get things split out in a way that actually makes sense. I was actually going to ask something similar along those lines. What what would you say for this working group is our, how much of this is, uh, how much of the work we're doing is it to, to move forward the Envoy APIs versus actually trying to come up with a real standard for the industry on a data plane API? So the, the notion of a universal data API to me says, we're kind of defining the common the common set of functionality that we think would be most useful to other proxies and load balancers to standardize around. And yeah, then there's I mean, kind of a, there's kind of a, which is we do also want to advance the Envoy API specifically. Yeah, um, I, I guess I will briefly give my, my thoughts on that and then I'm sure people will have different thoughts, which is I, I think what's interesting about this is that we have to, at least from the Envoy project side, we need to strike a balance of, you know, we want to continue to iterate on Envoy and we want to continue to move things forward. So this is not entirely, uh, let's stop everything and let's, you know, do some, some uh, effort to actually standardize. At the same time, we've seen interest from different companies and different proxies where, you know, we think that th there's a need for this type of API between control planes and between proxy systems. So I guess my, my view is that to the extent that we have interest from people like the gRPC folks or hopefully others that they want to consume the APIs, I, I think I think we want to be pragmatic and actually make that work. So it's not like let's just do a do a uh, standard project and like let's let's hope that someone uses it. I think we could be more pragmatic. But if we have people that want to build products on it, I I, I think I'm very excited about making this work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I my my two cents is basically what Matt said. I mean. I think incrementally evolving the APIs towards the point where it meets that second criteria that of uh, being just the general standard, which is not Envoy specific, is essentially where we want to go. Um, I think like nothing's off the table at this point in terms of like that long-term direction. Um, and we can definitely, you know, if, if someone decides, for example, well, this, uh, you know, this form of this, the, the way in which uh, listener objects today makes absolutely no sense, or we should be using you know, maybe there are some things which are off the table. Like I think we're gonna, we wanted these to be proto-based and we want there to be sort of a good GRPC support. So like there's a few sort of like fundamental sort of uh, uh, structural elements of these APIs, which probably are gonna be completely standard. But within that, um, I think we, you know, we have a lot of scope to like completely reshape large parts of it, but this will have to be a, a gradual process. And we have to be cognizant of the fact that, yeah, we need to have both at any point in time, real clients implemented it. And we also have real customers in terms of management servers today for these APIs 
who also are going to really be in a position to make you know radical changes overnight if uh, if, if that's what we cook up. So uh, that anyway, that that's my two cents. Uh, does yeah, else on, on the pragmatic side, when you mentioned that we would probably want to split out a separate repo to host the universal data plane API, I think I think that's necessary. I think you kind of have to start there. Um, but we can even we can even potentially take it further. Like when I saw someone posted um, general kind of API guidelines to follow. So if if this would end up being a common set of universal APIs, perhaps another thing we could do is also provide a common set of guidelines for people that are writing extensions onto the APIs that are subject to other proxies. So it's it's something we'd probably take on further down the line. But those are things to think about. Yeah, to the question I want to ask you, what to you would be like, um, well, what would a universal data plane API look like to you, which uh, the Envoy ones don't look like today? It's not, so I don't know if it's, uh, it's not necessarily what they would look like. I think it's the, it's, there's kind of a common set of functionality that maybe pretty much, you know, 90, 95% of proxies have to provide. So does the API cover that? Does it cover too much where, you know, those 90% of proxies look at it and go, well, I don't have most of that functionality. I can't implement this entire thing as a specification. Um, or is it, yeah, this is, these are the common things. I agree with all these. I provide all this functionality. I'm going to use a common, I'm going to use kind of the same, the same idea or the same intents to produce additional functionality that I want to do, but it's going to be in the same vein. So if we say XDS is kind of the way that you do data plane API, that to me makes sense. And everyone kind of follows a common pattern. Then there's a question of what are the actual XDS APIs specifically that we would expect everyone to implement if they want to be, I don't know, if, I don't know if you want to say compliant, but if you want to say, yeah, I implement the universal data plane API, these are the APIs I have to implement. And then there's also kind of the strategy of this is the way that other APIs should be implemented as well. So usually a spec will have, you know, here, here are the things that you have to implement. And then here's a way for you to do extensions for your own proxy or for your own product that are unique to you but they look like the other APIs as well. Does that yeah, make sense? I, I, I do think I do what you're saying, there's, a, there's, a, you know, there's a sort of a missing piece here in the sense of needing some sort of general purpose like capability negotiation thing so that you can start from a basic core and negotiate out from that. Like you can always add fields and in the strict backward compatibility sense, you haven't broken any, any clients, but if the management server and the clients are expecting different things about what fields they in terms of what fields they know about then the net result isn't going to be what you know what, what the people configuring the system uh, necessarily intended right actually mark that, that is addressed in the stable api versioning uh proposal with a client feature uh, discovery oh, that, oh, that did make it in there okay good mm. but i mean it's 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 not exactly uh it's, it's, it's very high level right now. It's just a bunch of opaque strings. And we have to think about what they really will mean and whether there's a better way of structuring the APIs to actually structurally separate out some, some pieces. And, you know, and yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I, I would like to make a point, if possible. Uh, regarding uh, either we start from uh, Envoy AI or we already find some scratch uh, for our participated to a number of working in the past uh, i would say that every time we want to restart from scratch uh, to define something universal it takes a decade because it's impossible to cover everything and uh, to find that. So, uh, on the other side, uh, when we start Something uh, to the initial goals of the, the, the first design, and so it is difficult to steer it uh, toward something more universal. Uh, I think it is absolutely mandatory to be able to cover uh, the current invoice API just because uh, apparently it works and uh, if we like it, uh, we need to cover it. It's a good start to have a definition of uh, something to do, but we need to, um, to be reasonable at some point and probably decide to fork when it has to, uh, to fork, even if we break the compatibility at some point, maybe we will figure that certain parts need to be uh, significantly modified because uh, the way they were implemented uh, used only match a certain set of feature revolts, for example. Uh, we, 
we can detect a number of things like this. So I, I'm in favor of uh, start Envoy API and uh, I with no reserve to um, strongly modify it over time if needed. Okay, yeah, I, I think like the, the intent, I mean, yeah, we, we, we're going to this exercise with the idea that we probably, while we have something that works, we probably don't have something that works for everyone. And we're very open to the possibility of changing just about every, anything, as long as we have like real concrete um, sort of use cases to motivate. And that would be essentially what we'll drive. I mean, that's just generally within the Ombud community, the way we work, we, pro we prefer to use like, you know, concrete, tangible things. So if, for example, if we learn that, you know, for, to support HA proxy, we would need to make these changes. These will be things that we're very willing to discuss and we're, we're open to, um, as long as we don't actually lose, um, you know, the, the fundamental capability to ex express what we need uh, for Ombud. I, I, well, think, there's I think there's not, not, not a big danger of that. If we combine uh, Vaslov and Willie's uh, thoughts, I think, we we have the right track so uh obviously the the current apis work and uh that's their big strengths um what we could do is uh find within those existing apis uh what we can consider the to be the core or basic features that should be uh common amongst all load balancers and uh that should be implemented by load balancers uh, in order to be effectively uh, communicating with, with control planes and providing the data plane API with functionality. And then uh, out, uh, out from that, we can build up maybe one or two uh, additional feature sets or um, optional feature sets, uh, which, would, uh, uh, which would cover a larger scope of uh, features and maybe be either more specific for particular product or uh, just uh, enable more advanced or extensive uh, configuration options. I think yeah. that's fine. I, I, I think this just comes back to what I was saying before, which is that um, I, I would not want to do that work if in practice no one's going to end up no one's going to end up using it. So like if, for example, and I understand that, that there's no, there's no commitments within this industry, but like if the HA proxy folks, like if you were to say, you know, with high likelihood, if we do this work, you know, you will move to this API. I think, I think we would definitely do it. Right. Um, but, but it would be, you know, it would, it would be a shame to do a bunch of work and then it ends up being that no one ends up using it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we, we're not fans of doing useless work, definitely. Right. Uh, so, like, from our standpoint, um, I think uh, by the end of this month, uh, or maybe start of J July, uh, we'll be able to, um, like, have a clearer idea of what kind of products uh, or what kind of ways we might be uh, using the data plane APIs uh, in, uh, and then that would allow us to uh, give some actual uh, concrete feedback and, and uh, suggestions uh, based off of uh, the current state of the APIs. Super, yeah, that's great. Yeah, I mean, in terms of like moving towards this like common core, that is kind of the goal, the current uh, uh, sort of migration from the Envoy to the UDPA package namespace. So hopefully we'll be able to actually start moving out some basic things like really soon, which even things which are very un uncontroversial, for example, data types and this kind of thing. And uh, this is something that uh, can be done sooner rather than later. I think that the really difficult questions will be on things like, you know, what belongs in a route versus a cluster definition uh, and between different proxies like that, that's an area. Or what form will our endpoint load balancing assignments take uh, if it's to be actually generally useful for everybody. There's a lot of specifics in there which are crept in based on the feature support that we've been uh, adding to our Envoy. So yeah, I think I look forward to the, those conversations. Cool, um, so I think we're out of time. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I hope this has been informative and useful and uh, and yeah, uh, we'll yep. in about a month's time. Uh, glad to see everybody, uh, and thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Yep. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.